Quit overanalyzing. Music is supposed to be about emotion. As a music theorist, I've been told this by a number of people in my life, and I've heard it given as advice to other musicians on multiple occasions. In general, I think it's a well-intentioned and partially true statement, but a flawed one, whose flaws I think are worth addressing. This plea has two parts that I will address individually. The first has to do with the subject of musical analysis, and the second with the idea of music's purpose. Firstly, the idea of analysis. The plea to quit overanalyzing is typically given by people who are usually not quite as well-versed in music as the person they're speaking to. And I don't say that in a derogatory way because they might be right. And if someone tells you this, it's certainly something you should stop and consider. But in order to say that you're overanalyzing something, you have to decide what constitutes overanalysis. Analysis is typically done with some kind of goal in mind, so logically speaking, overanalysis would be a breaching of the level of study necessary to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. If you're told that you're overanalyzing something, it's likely because the speaker either sees that you are or thinks that you might be in danger of expending energy in a manner that's not conducive to what you're trying to accomplish. There are two reasons why this might happen, and those might be 1. You are studying more material than is necessary for your intended goal, or 2. You are studying the wrong thing. Regarding the first reason, as an example, if you're learning to play a piece of music on the piano, it's probably not necessary for you to learn what a secondary dominant is in order to play one. If you want to learn to improvise chord progressions, and not just any chord progressions, but chord progressions that move in a particular manner, and you feel that your diatonic harmonies are beginning to get a bit stale to you, perhaps it might be one something worth studying. As for the second reason, as for another example, if you're trying to learn how to write what you would consider to be a good song, it's possible that studying music theory on a piece of paper won't help you as much as you think. Considering that music theory won't make you a good composer anyway, because in order to be a com good composer you need to have some kind of taste first, maybe what you need to do before you get too deep into actual music theory is to figure out what sorts of sounds you like and want to create so that you have an actual goal ahead of you to focus your studies on, and that might take some trial and error playing around on a piano or any number of things. Now, maybe your judgment on these matters is incorrect, especially if you don't have much experience, and that's why it's good to have a teacher or a mentor of some kind, but they're questions that you ought to take some time to consider. The second half of the plea from the beginning of this video is where the glaring flaw arises, and that's the idea that music is supposed to be about emotion. This is typically expressed in two forms. First, that the process of creating music should be an emotional one, in which a person is guided by their heart, if you will. And second, that music should communicate emotion. Now, as for the first matter, that's something that I intend to speak at length about in a video in the near future, so instead I'm going to focus on the second one. Music is about emotion. Well, is it? There's no doubt that it can express emotion, but I would say that that's a very one-dimensional way of looking at it. Music is a very rich and powerful form of art, and to limit its expressive ability to just emotion underestimates just what it's capable of. Not only can music express emotions, and very nuanced forms of those emotions at that, it can also describe actions, locations, people, scenarios, and more in a great amount of detail which is particularly clear in the higher resolution music of film, TV, and video games. And perhaps we might have a variety of vaguely emotional responses to some of these musical descriptions, but I've never heard a writer be told to write about how they feel when describing what a house looks like, and I don't think music should be confined to that sort of thinking either. Another thing to consider is the appreciation of music for its own sake. Music is really just patterns on top of patterns on top of more patterns, and if the careful manipulation of these patterns brings some sense of awe or satisfaction from the listener, I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to strive for and to appreciate. I would think a lot of the appeal of math rock comes from this, just as an example. It's sort of the musical equivalent of a kaleidoscope. It's not exactly that the series of patterns has to elicit some particular emotion or even meaning exactly, but it's the observation of these overlapping and transforming patterns that fulfills the listener instead. So are you overanalyzing your music? Maybe. 
Think about what your goals are and see if what you're doing is helping or hurting you. Is music really about emotion? I think there's far more to it than that.